updates here and how they looked on our previous episode on the horizontal bandsaw but this here's a vertical bandsaw this is an old one that I've I bought many years ago it was used when I bought it but it still does a great job here so uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a uh, weld on the blade now what I'm gonna show you here right away pardon me for walking in front of you um, where the where the bandsaw blade comes through and does your sawing the blades gonna be turning your feed your material in there um, the blade thickness this is a half inch blade it's just as critical for the blade to be flat in the back as the teeth are in the front because as as the the saw gets as you start sawing there's a backup bearing back here that the blade pushes against so it gives you a stout backup on the on the blade then you can push against the teeth there's the same thing underneath the table there's a, a set of, or a bearing in the back of the blade and on the sides of the uh the blade here there's some adjustable blocks that come down and once you get your blade installed in the in the saw uh you you put your blade in the saw and you create tension on the saw blade by turning this handle and raising the top wheel up and that will tighten the blade uh and then you adjust your small little adjustment blocks in right next to the side of the blade again the bottom has the same thing on it so you have two good alignment points on top and bottom of the blade where your cutting surface is uh, that keeps the blade from drifting as you're cutting uh, we also have a, a means here to raise and lower the the uh, guides on the side of the blades but this is all in a salad bar the bearings back there everything's always got a, a good surface for how it uh, how it holds and holds and controls the blade if you see up here on most saws inside the cabinet you mark what's the maximum blade length that you get can use this is 120 inches that would be how many feet 10 feet 10 feet is the maximum length we can have because as we tighten this wheel up if the blades longer than 10 feet the the wheel won't put tension on the blade you can go down I believe I've got it down to 115 inches marked over there that's the shortest blade that I can can use uh, here it tells a little bit about uh, what model of saw is and what the the voltage is that you use and, and things like that there's some belts on there the the top wheel has like a rubber shoe and that uh, cushions the the blade and keeps it from flattening out the teeth because as you recall at our previous episode the band behind the teeth is narrower than the teeth what they are there each tooth is offset one way or the other and that makes a wider cut than what the band is that way you can push your material past the blade okay uh, I'm going to close this thing up here. As you can see, I've got several different size guides here. This blade happens to be a half inch thick. Uh, we've got it there for eighth inch blades, quarter inch, three eighths, uh, several different sizes. So depending on the blade you have, your guides cannot go past the band part of the blade because it'll well, flatten out your teeth. Okay, this here is a box of blade stock. There's a big coil of material in here. Uh, it tells us on here, this is an M10 blade. Uh, uh, the product number there's 255 feet in this coil you can buy 100 foot coils uh, and it tells the band thickness here is 20.025 that's 25 thousandths um, or 0.64 millimeters they got it both ways uh, and it's a 10 to 14 variable pitch blade if you look at the blade here I don't know if I've got a, a light enough background for you to look against the teeth are not all the same distance apart so it's from 10 to 14 inches between the teeth per inch uh, 10 teeth per inch 10 to 14 so anyhow um, so we've got some blades here that we've used I'm just gonna hang these over here we're not doing anything with them I've got a mark for stainless steel or for bronze as, as I mentioned once you cut bronze with a, a blade it doesn't work so good for steel anymore so I'm gonna get these both out of the way here so now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna weld this saw blade together. I, we've already got one in there, but uh, this this old uh, bandsaw happens to have a blade welder attachment on it. This is where you take uh, uh, the size of the blade. This is half inch, so that's the the maximum size blade they're talking about here. So we're gonna put this up at full voltage. Uh, it's got a grinding wheel on it here. I'll explain that in a minute. And a kneeling button. And here's the welding attachment here. Um, I've already welded a couple of blades together here. If you can see what that looks like, that's 
fresh off the welder. It's got kind of a, a bead there on both sides because we butt weld the blade together. That's where you take the blade and you force the two uh, ends of the blades together and it melts and fuses the, the blade together. So uh, I've already done that with this particular sample. After you weld the blade, then you anneal the blade where the weld was taking place. And you, should, you remember from our last video, we had uh, a nice weld on a brand new blade, and you could see the blue line in there. That, that uh, We'll see how we do that. You get that blade in between a couple of the clamps here, and then you anneal it. That gets it uh, softened up because this is tool steel blade material, and just welding it, it's going to be real brittle, so you have to anneal it. And uh, we also have to grind it because we can't have that blade with those bulges sticking out of there. I don't know what the best point is to show you how brittle this thing is, but I'm going to do this right now. I've already welded this blade together, and I've got one that I've annealed. So I'm going to give these both a, a bend here, and this one here has not been annealed. This one has. I'm going to bend these about this. I'm going to see if I get them in line here. Bend them about the same, and the one that's not been annealed broke. Okay, the one that has been annealed didn't break. So there's a good, uh, a good test there. Because this blade has to go around, these, there's a wheel on the bottom, a wheel on the top, it's got to go around those wheels, so it's got a flex in there. And if you didn't anneal it, it would break on you. Because we, we just checked the bending of the blade. There's also pressure against the teeth of the blade when you're cutting, that would cause it to break. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the full story here before I do the weld and, and grinding here because we've got to make sure that you can hear what I'm talking about. There may be a little noise involved here. So uh, you can see what the difference is. I welded the blade and then I ground it and annealed it. You can see the blue. Why do I grind it or how do I grind it? The, the bandsaw has got a grinding wheel on it right here and after you've made your weld you grind that uh, weld the lumps off the weld you, you run it back and forth across the wheel Top and then you can also access the grinding wheel from underneath and then right here is a little gauge That you have to be able to get the blade to slide through Without hanging up Okay goes right through there That's to simulate the the guides on the blade right here right next to the saw blade You want to have these guides as close as you can so the blade has minor minor movement there uh, when, when we welded that thing at first, if you try to slide this thing through here, you wouldn't get it to go. Okay, we're going to weld a blade here now. This is the, the main event. Now you see what a weld looks like already, but now we're going to do the weld. So this is, let's get a drum roll going here. Um, important thing that when you, when you weld these blades together, you're gonna, we're going to put them in these two uh, clamps that have uh, they are also kind of uh, an electrode. You got to you got to get them in there, and when you put the blades together, you can't have any gap between the blades. If you have a gap in there, the welder will blow a hole in it. You got intense heat right there, smelting it together. If you don't have these things right next to each other, I don't know if you can see that right there, and the back flush, you don't want a blade welded like this or like this because when it goes through that. That guide there, the bearing in the back, is going to get whacked, and it won't let the blade go through. So the back has to be even, and the front has to be even, and you can't have a gap in there. I don't know if you can see a, a gap there. You have to have them ground flat. If you have made a cut on your coil to get a piece off, and then you make a cut, what was it, 120 inches later, you put them together, and you need to make sure that the back of your blade is flush, and the two uh, weld or the two ends where you're going to weld or ground or are even. If they're not, then you can turn on your grinding wheel and go over here and and grind the end of the blade until it is flush. So it might not be a bad idea while you're while you're laying it out. To, I put a couple of marks on the on the blades here because you could conceivably get the thing welded with the teeth the wrong way. I don't think it would, I've never seen it happen. I've seen them installed on a on a bandsaw upside down, but uh, uh, getting them the right way it just gives you a little help lining them up. Okay, so if you come over here, might be a little hard to see here, uh, I'm going to put these blade sections in here, 
and they have a they have an edge on the back. There's a shoulder here where I'll make sure I got the right ends there. There's a, a shoulder on the back of these uh, clamping blocks that is a straight line between the two. So if you put your if you put your blades up against there and slide them together, that'll ensure that you've got your your blade back straight and the front obviously too because they're parallel. Then we'll we'll uh, clamp these things down on these uh, electrode points. I just clamp them down lightly to start with. That way I can make sure I get them lined up properly. And okay, they look pretty good right there. Take take a look in there with the with the camera, and we'll see up here if, if the if the blades are together. Okay, the gap in the blade is right in between the two clamp blocks. You see the clamp block here and here. The split in the blade is right even in the middle. Okay, so now we've got it right in the right position. I'm going to clamp these down tight because I have to have good conductivity to the each blade. Now this thing here has got a little cover on it that keeps sparks from flying out there. I'm not going to put that down just so you can see how the weld goes. So I'm going to step around here, get the camera in place. And then the, the welder has this lever right here. And that lever, when I push down on it, it's going to put electricity to the each each part of the clamps and squeeze them together at the same time. So you'll see it turn red and, and arc. I gotta push it down pretty fast and furious. As, and noted up here, I've got this dial set for maximum size because this is about the biggest blade this saw takes is a half inch. You probably could put a bigger one in there, but uh, we're gonna get good welding on it. Okay, here we go. We're gonna weld this thing. That was exciting, wasn't it? Okay, so we've got the weld made. I'm gonna take those out of there now and just loosen them up lightly hopefully they don't break there we've got a good weld there's no cracks or holes or pits in it it's pretty flush on the end it's kind of hot it turned blue anytime you turn metal blue it's probably gotten up to eight or nine hundred degrees okay i just turned on the grinding wheel not real loud so you got to be careful to turn that wheel off when you're done and keep your fingers away from it you can see here i'm going to grind away that weld, I started grinding it there. I've got to get it nice and flush. So I'm going to put it kind of in a in an arc and run it back and forth across the top of the grinding wheel. You can see there, I've, I've got it ground, but still where the weld is, it's it's uh, not all ground flush with the rest of the blade. So I've got to get that ground in there. It's getting pretty close. Right? i got a little bit more to do on the back side of the blade, so we'll do that. I'm also going to do a grind on the on the edge of the blade to get it keep it flat. So I'm going to use the face of the wheel for that. I just run this back and forth here. Run my finger over there. It's nice and smooth almost. Not quite to my satisfaction. You can kind of see where the spark is going. Now, uh, the other side of the blade, you grind on the bottom of the wheel. Now, I'm not going to grind it on the bottom of the wheel because it's kind of hard to see down there. Did I mention about wearing safety glasses while you're doing this? I just felt some uh, grit hit my forehead. I forgot to mention the safety glass aspect, so make sure you wear glasses. I'm gonna turn this thing upside down because it's kind of hard to see what's going on underneath here. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do the weld or the grinding of that weld on the top side as well here. We're gonna get it nice and flush. We've got our grind almost on there. got to make sure it goes through here that doesn't quite go while I'm we're gonna run out of time here so I'm gonna put this back up in here and I'm gonna put this it's got a couple other little spots that you can clamp on get your weld in the center and okay get right on top of the welder I'm gonna show you how to uh, this gets annealed I'm gonna push this button in and that gets some current going you see a little smoke and it turned blue so now we're good all right, um, that's gonna be about all we've got for time here. I do have a little bit of grinding to do on the back side to get it to go through the guide, but we just made a nice weld, so we should be good to go. We'll sign off until next time.